How many enjoyed Sister Cookie's song? How many enjoyed the service so far? Amen. I kind of feel like Harley. How do I top all that? <laughs> Open your Bibles if you don't mind. Open your Bibles to the book of Genesis chapter 37. Genesis chapter 37, verses, uh, I'm going to read verses 3 and 4, and then we're going to read verse 19. Amen. And I promise you, it is 2.34 right now. I should be done by about 3 o'clock. Amen. If you can hang with me for about 25 minutes, I promise you. Amen. I'll get out of the way. Amen. And just uh, continue. Let the Lord do what he does. Hallelujah. Would you all help me at this time, though? Help me welcome, since it's her first time as an official member of Grace Point Church, Sister Laura Akers. Give her a big hand clap here to my left. Amen. Brother Minister Cody Akers have moved down here to be a blessing and to help us in, in anything that they uh, they can do. Amen. And it's good to see Brianna again with us. See, we forgot about Brianna, huh? Thank you. I, I got it right. Brianna is good. That, I forgot about Brianna. Anna's been bringing Brianna. And the other day I had the sweetest, the sweetest Facebook message uh, uh, from Brianna's mother. And she just wanted to write and just say thank you uh, for, for, for just welcoming her daughter in. And she says she brags on our church. And that just makes me feel so good, amen, to know that we're loved and, and just so uh, and appreciated for what we want to do. And uh, Jeremiah, it's good to see you here. Give Jeremiah a big hand clap today. And Cody, my brother from another mother, he's here with us. God bless you. Let's get into the Word of God. The book of Genesis chapter 3, uh, th chapter 37, verses 3 through uh, three through four, and all of those that are watching online uh, webcast, we do have this service being webcast live right now on Facebook for each and every one of you that's watching and greeting us. Uh, happy anniversary. Thank you so much for tuning in. We pray that you continue to do so each and every time the doors are open here at church. Uh, don't just watch from home. Come on in and be a part of the service. I know some of you are shut in. You can't make it today, and if you could have, you would have. Amen. But I'm glad that you're able to join us via telecast, uh, webcast, amen. For those that are all around the world, there's people all over right now watching us from different countries, from different nations, and from different states, amen. They're watching this broadcast today. That don't put any pressure on you, does it? <laughs> amen. Uh, but let's go into the Word of God, and I just want to greet everybody that's watching via webcast. Thank you for the, the, the kind words and the love that you have shown towards Gen. Uh, Grace Point the last 10 years. Amen. And here's to the next 10. Praise the Lord. Amen. Genesis chapter 37, verses 3, it says, Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children, because he was the son of his old age. Also he made him a tunic of many colors, a robe. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. And I want us to go down to verse, thir uh, verse 19. Verse 19, and they said, One to another, Behold, the dreamer cometh. Behold, the dreamer cometh. I want to preach this morning, Behold, the dreamer cometh. Just look at somebody and say, You don't know who's having dreams about you. Amen. Come on. Let everybody know, behold, the dreamer cometh. Give the Lord a big hand clap at this time. Father, we love you. We thank you for this opportunity to come into your house. We thank you for this another, uh, just another chance, oh God, to just uh, thank you for uh, being your servant. Lord, I thank you for the years that you've given us, of signs, wonders, and miracles, and blessings. Lord, I pray that, God, that the first 10 years was just building foundation. But this next year, 10 years, Lord, we shoot up like a skyscraper. And, Lord, the best is yet to come. And we just know it and we believe it. Lord, we pray as you've done in the last year, Lord, you've sent us wonderful people. Lord, you're going to continue to bless us and send us more. Lord God, we believe in you and we trust in you and we thank you in advance for all that you're doing. In Jesus' name we pray. You may be seated at this time. As we read here in Genesis, we find Jacob. How many remember Jacob? Jacob. Jacob the deceiver, Jacob uh, the one who robbed, uh, or not robbed, but he kind of conned himself 
uh, into a blessing. If you know the story, it's uh, now you read the Bible, and Bishop was talking about this in the first uh, Bible lesson this morning, and he did a wonderful job. But he was talking about the Bible having everything you need, and it is true. The Bible is just pregnant with just information and revelation and just power and and instructions. Amen. That's why uh, they say in the book of Psalms, thy word is a lamp unto thy feet and a light unto thy path. Amen. A, A lamp will show you where your feet are, but a light, amen, will show you where you're going. Hallelujah. And so, so everything that you need is in the word of God. And the Bible, I love the Bible because in the Bible, it's not, the Bible is not comprised of perfect people. The Bible is comprised of imperfect people that have had an encounter with a perfect God. And through that encounter, God changes them and God moves on them and his name is glorified and you see signs, wonders and miracles and all types of, of, of powerful things and, and the thing that's beautiful about the word of God is that we can relate there's, there's scriptures and there's, there's people and there's characters in the Bible that each and every one of us can relate to, can't we? Come on somebody, uh, you can read a scripture and you kind of think, that sounds kind of like me that, that, that person right there, I, I've been there before. I know what he might have been feeling at that point in time. And, and, and the Bible talks about a man by the name of Jacob. Jacob at one point was a deceiver. He, he was encamped around deception. His mother helped deceive his father. And, and, and Joseph, he was deceived by his uncle. If you read in the scriptures, I I could spend an hour and a half just talking about Jacob, but the story today is not about Jacob. It's about Joseph. So just bear with me for a minute. But as the story goes, you find Jacob, he, he, he was a deceiver. He deceived others around him, but he had an encounter with God that changed him. The Bible said that there was an angel of the Lord that, that, that came past Jacob, and Jacob grabbed a hold of the angel, and he said, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. I refuse to take one more step being the same person that I am yesterday. I refuse to go one more day being that person person that I was last week. I've got to have some changes in my life. Can somebody shout hallelujah? And the Bible said he wrestled with the Lord all night, the angel of the Lord all night until finally the angel touched his hip and it caused Jacob to walk with a limp the rest of his life. But at that same time, God saw the sincerity and he saw the passion. He saw the urgency that was in Jacob's life that he wanted to be different. He no longer wanted to be a deceiver. He no longer wanted to be on the run for things that he's done in the past. And God touched his life. He touched his hip and he changed his walk. Brothers and sisters, I've come to a point in time where I've realized I don't mind having a limp as long as he changes my name. I don't mind being a little different, Brother Cody, as long as I know God is on my side. I I don't mind being all the way, uh, not 100%, and I have some weaknesses, but as long as I know to lean upon the everlasting arms of Jesus, that everything's going to be all right, can you shout praise the Lord? God changes Jacob's name to Israel. He's a father of many nations now. And there he has sons after sons. He has, ends up in having 12 sons, but the Bible talks about the son Joseph. Here, Joseph, there was something about him that Israel loved. The Bible does not say that he did not love his other sons. Or he hated him, but he really loved Joseph. Are you with me today? I don't know if it was his old age, amen, or, or maybe the fact that if you study the story, that, that, that Jacob, the one that he loved, the one that he was passionate about was Rachel. But like I said before, Laban, the uncle, the father of Rachel, the father of, of Leah, he switched them during the marriage ceremony. And there, my brothers and sisters, Jacob had to work seven more years to get the bride that he was longing for. 
Leah gave him son after son after son. But finally, it was Rachel, his beautiful wife. Rachel, the one that captured his attention and captured his heart. It was Joseph was his, her firstborn. So maybe it was that or maybe it was just that Israel was getting older. And you know how it is when you get older, your kids get a little cuter, don't they? Don't they? Now, now everybody that knows Pastor Luke and Sister Anna, we have these five beautiful kids, but there's things that little Reagan gets away with that Ryland doesn't get away with. Reagan is, Reagan is, is, is he's, he's four years old and he still sleeps in bed with us at nighttime. This the other night, and he knows why he does. He's slick. He's good. He comes in and he says, the other night, he said, Daddy, I need you to protect me. What are you talking about? And, and, but yet my heart just melts. Come on in, boy. Come on. And he just snuggles up to Dad. And he just loves on. Yesterday we were eating some pizza. And here he's eating pizza. And he walks up to his mom and he gives her the pizza and says, Mommy, feed me. And he's sitting there and she's feeding him. And I'm thinking, what kind of con artist is this? <laughs> if one of the other kids tried to pull that prank, it wouldn't last very long. It doesn't mean that we don't love him, but the baby has a special place. There's a rule in our house, give the baby what the baby wants. And they all, the older kids don't like it, but they forget that one time they were the baby. And when they were the baby, we would say the same thing, get the baby what the baby wants. Amen. But the Bible doesn't go into much detail as, but as that Joseph, he didn't do anything special. The Bible didn't say he had a different look. It didn't say that he did something special. It wasn't something that he said or it wasn't something that he'd done. But brothers and sisters, something about Joseph caught the eye of Israel. Amen. His eyes were upon his, uh, uh, Joseph. There was something about him. And brothers and sisters, can I just tell you this one minute? Everybody that's here today, many of you, we understand that God loves everybody, doesn't he? God loves all the little children. God loves his children. God loves the sheep of his pasture. But I've come to let you in on something. There are some of you this morning or this afternoon that get God's attention. It ain't nothing that you've done. It's not anything that you said. But it's a simple fact that it's called the favor of God. God. Is anybody in this place understand what I'm talking about this morning? That, that, that it's something that you didn't do, you didn't have to go through, you didn't have to jump through a hoop, but there's something about you that gets God's attention. There's something about you when you wave your hand, he looks down and says, that's my boy. There's something about you whenever you start to sing, he says, oh, that's my girl. There's something about you. It's called the favor of God. How many believe in the favor this morning? He loves everybody. He loves the people across the street right now making terrible decisions. He loves them. God is no respecter of persons, but God is a respecter of principle. He's looking for those that have a heart after his heart. Look at David. David was known after, as a man after God's own heart, but David was not a perfect man. He had all types of flaws. He had all types of failures, but he got God's attention. He was the one that said, as the deer pant for the water, so my soul longs after you. There was something about David's heart that he wanted to be like God. God. And this morning I've come to ask you today, what is your heart beating for? Is your heart beating for the things of this world? Is your heart beating for a new car? Is your heart beating to be more like Jesus? Those of you this afternoon that's come in this place, you could have left a long time ago. I understand we've been here for a while, but it's all right. Amen. I, 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 if you can give television three hours, why can't you give God three hours? If you can give a football game six hours, why can't you give Jesus just three hours? Is anybody in here today, I don't know about you, but I don't mind waiting on Jesus. Because he's been so good. And I come in.
in this place today and I've seen the hand of God upon my life and I've seen the hand of God upon my children's life and upon my wife's life. It, It seems as if God is orchestrating things and he's pulling the strings and I see other people around us that are struggling and I see other people and I hate to tell you brothers and sisters but I've come to the conclusion that God's favor is upon our life. The Bible says if you seek ye first the kingdom of God, anybody going to help me today? I said if you seek ye first the kingdom of God, all these things that are added will be added unto you. I've learned my brothers and sisters that if I trust in the Lord with all my might and I lean upon him, I don't know about you today, but some of you, you better start learning how to lean upon Jesus. Don't lean upon the horoscopes. Don't lean upon Dr. Phil. Don't lean upon Sister Oprah. You better learn to lean upon Jesus. Stop leaning upon the bottle. Stop leaning upon them cigarettes. Stop leaning upon that dope and lean upon Jesus. Stop leaning upon your best friend. Stop leaning upon your girlfriend. Stop leaning upon your boyfriend and lean on Jesus. Tis so sweet. I said, tis so sweet to trust in Jesus just to take him at his word. Anybody here today know that if you trust in the Lord, he'll bring you through. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. said somebody shout hallelujah you've got to learn to trust in Jesus and brothers and sisters I want to come and tell you something if you can trust in him and if you can act according to the word of God and walk the way that he wants you to walk his favor will be upon your life there is no coincidences church there is no four leaf clover in my pocket there is no rabbit foot at my house it is nothing but the divine favor and the blessings of the Lord. I didn't do anything to earn it. I didn't do anything to buy it. It was just God put his eyes down on me and said, that's my son. That's my daughter. And as long as I've got his attention, everything I say and everything I do, he hears it. Somebody shout, he hears me. Oh, come on, say, he hears me. I dare you to turn to somebody and say, he hears me. He hears me. He hears me. He hears me. And the Bible said, because of the favor that he had, he was hated for it. Can you believe that he was hated for the things that was given to him by God? And I've come to tell you today, church, not everybody's going to celebrate you. One thing I've learned in 10 years of pastoring is not everybody's going to celebrate your success. Not everybody's going to be high-fiving you when you have good times. Because there's something called the flesh that people just get irked and it just rubs them the wrong way. Because the first thing they want to do is say, well, he's just like us. He's had his mistakes. He hasn't always been perfect. He hasn't always, and you know what that is? That ain't nothing but haters. Brothers and sisters, hater aid comes in all different types of flavors. About three of you got that. I said hater aid comes in all different types of flavors. People will hate you for looking good. People will hate you for dressing right. People will hate you for having money in your pocket. People will hate you for having a house. People will hate you for having three pairs of shoes. People will hate you for having a new phone. And brothers and sisters, all they got to do is put themselves in the right place and do the right things at the right time. And God will honor their prayers too. Stop hating on me and get yourself in position and God will open the doors for you just as he's did for us. Did you hear me, church? 
Any of you that go to Walmart, any of you go to the mall, any of you go to Target, you can do, whenever you go inside, they have two points of, a, 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 of access. There's the doors there that you have to push the doors open, and then they have the doors that have the sensor above them that when you get to the right place, they just open for you. You don't have to push. You don't have to pull. You don't have to put any effort in it whatsoever. All you've got to do is get in the right place, Minister Cody, and the doors will open open for you. I've come to tell you today, there's a little thing called the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost serves as a sensor in your life. And if you can get yourself in the right place, many of us keep trying so hard. We're trying to open doors that are not meant to be open. And we're trying to pull doors open that we're not meant to walk through. But I've come to tell you today, all you've got to do is get yourself in position. If you can get yourself in the right position, baby, the doors are going to open wide. You don't have to push. You don't have to pull. All you've got to do is walk. Can anybody do that with me today? Say, Pastor, in 2018, I'm not going to push for a blessing. I'm not going to pull for a miracle. I'm just going to position myself. And if I get in position, Jesus is going to open the door. If I get myself in position, Jesus is going to make a way. Does anybody know tonight that Jesus, he'll make a way? Shout hallelujah. Come on, shout hallelujah. He'll make a way. I said he'll make a way. He always has and he always will. But here's the story, people may be seated. God gives to Joseph. He gives Joseph a gift of dreams. This is something God's promised. And he gives Joseph this gift. And Joseph begins to prophesy. And he begins to tell everybody what his dream is. His dream, he's talking about how there will be seven uh, uh, husk of corn, and uh, how this wheat would come and, and they would bow down. I'm sorry, the, 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 the wheat would come and bow down towards one of the wheat. He talked about it, and what he was doing is he was showing, he said, there'll be a point in time when you, my brothers, will come down and bow down in worship or bow down in submission. And the Bible said they hated him even more so. Read your Bible. But here's the kicker, church. If the brothers, the 11 brothers only knew that they were the beneficiaries of the blessing that God was putting on Joseph's life. God favored Joseph, Minister Cody. He favored jo uh, Joseph, but he was using Joseph's favor to bless all of his brothers. But his brothers, because it wasn't their dream, they become indignant, angry, and furious. Just this last couple of weeks, or just the last few weeks, or 10 days here, I believe it was, last Monday, we celebrated Dr. Martin Luther King Day. Dr. Martin Luther King, in the midst of, of a horrible dark age through the America, when people would be lynched and African Americans would be, uh, would be treated horribly and treated worse than animals, how they would be beaten and they would be brutalized and kicked. And, and when they would try to stand up for themselves, German shepherd dogs would be, a, uh, uh, would be uh, released to be attacking them. It was a horrible, dark time. But there was a man by the name of Dr. Dr. Martin Luther King who stood up in the midst of all of this craziness, in the midst of all of this evilness, and he said, I've got a dream. I have a dream that it's not always going to be like this. That one day our sons and daughters will walk together and we'll all be created equally and everybody will see us as equal and there will not be any more color issues. And brothers and sisters, can I stop and say this? We haven't got there yet, but we're getting closer. As many people, they hated Dr. Martin Luther King for that vision. They hated him from that dream and that dream killed him. But brothers and sisters, today we are reaping the harvest and I believe that each and every one of 
us can agree that we are all benefiting a better country and benefiting a better time because one man stood up in the midst of terrible times and God gave him a dream. The greatest asset to my life is my beautiful wife. We don't share the same color of skin. We don't have the same pigment. And I'm glad about that. I'm so glad that we don't live in a time anymore where people look at you kind of funny if you're in an interracial relationship. I'm so glad that we've come to a time where we're growing as a people, who we can love one another. I told you last week I had an opportunity when all that snow was falling and all that was coming down. You've seen cars skidding off the road and you've seen people stuck and their tires were sliding. And it was such a beautiful thing. Nobody got out and looked what color you wore before they helped you out. I was able to help out an African-American man and then my car ends up getting stuck and this African-American man got out and pushed my car. We didn't have to sit there and look at each other and say, wait a minute you're not my brother you you're not the same color as me and if you're not brothers and sisters you know what the problem was we were both stuck and we both needed help and I've come to tell you today in America in this world we're all stuck and we're stuck together we need to lean upon each other to help get us out of this mess can anybody agree with me today and if we can just dare dream a dream that we in the next 10 years can raise up as a church in the next 10 years we can raise up and get past all types of things, if we can raise up and become a church and a house of prayer, if we can become a house that says we love you as you are, but we love you not to leave you the same way, come unto Jesus, let him wash you, let him cleanse you, let him purify you, and watch your life be changed. I stand before you today not to put myself on any type of level as Dr. Martin Luther King, but I'll tell you something. I have a dream. I have a dream. You know what's kept us here at Grace Point when there was times when there was only about a handful of us. You know what's kept us here at Grace Point when it seemed like nobody was going to stick around except for just a few of us and a core of us. You know what's kept us around this area in the tri-state for so many years, even though we have a ministry that has thousands of people. What has kept us here, brothers and sisters, is there's a dream that God has got something for us. There is a day destiny. There is a purpose. There is a calling that this church will do something great for God before Jesus comes back, church. I believe he's going to make make us and he's going to create us to be a church triumphant that when Jesus comes back, he's not coming for a weak, feeble church, but he is coming for a church that's in, Father, we've been waiting on you. We're ready to go. Our garments are pressed. Our garments are white. Our garments are ready. Come on, somebody. I said we're, he's coming back for a church triumphant. I have a dream, church, that there's going to be a move. Unlike anything we've ever seen before. This church, Calvary, that used to be Calvary Temple. Calvary Temple was known throughout the city as a powerful, powerful church. Brothers and sisters, I do not believe for one minute that God allowed this building to be erected just so it could just have a few people. I believe beyond a shadow of a doubt God gave us this building for us to fill it up. And what I'm asking for you today, what I'm asking for you as a favor from Pastor Luke is that you dare dream with me. Don't hate me for the dream. Don't hate Sister Anna for the dream. Don't hate Bishop for the dream. Get behind the vision and let's do great things for God. Get behind the vision. Hold our hands up. Pray for us. Seek the face of God for us. And watch God shake this city. We're seeing it come to pass, church. The prophet Joel said, In the last days, thus saith the Lord, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters are going to dream dreams. They're going to see visions. Come on, church. I don't know about you, but I love what I see. These young people talking about what God's doing for them. These young people talking about how God's blessing them and how God's changing them. I feel sorry for some of you that's been waiting and looking at your watch ready to get out of here. When God is pouring out his spirit, some of you seasoned saints, God's not 
not done with you yet. You haven't seen your best days. Your best days and your blessed days are ahead of you. This In this last time, church, in this end day, end time, church, brothers and sisters, we need wisdom and power. We need the wisdom of the old saints of God, the old school saints that knew what it took to touch the throne, to help train us new ones, to help train these young adults to be that are full of energy and full of power and full of ability and full of talents. Teach us. Teach them. But David said it best. He said, teach my hands to war. Teach us that we may take the city for Jesus. You know what? Not everybody's going to enjoy that because it's going to put some work in. We're going to have to put some work in, Jeremiah, but it can be done because there's more of you outside these doors. There's more, James, there's more of you outside these doors. Sister Cookie, there's more of you outside these doors. Kaylee and Anna, they live in this area. There's more of them outside these doors. All we got to do is go out and get them. Anybody else want to share the dream? Anybody else want to see the dream? Verse 19. The brothers looked at him. Stand, stay, stay, stay uh, standing, please. I'm done. They said, Behold, the dreamer cometh. Behold, the dreamer cometh. Here comes the dreamer. I've been called a lot of things that's hurt my feelings. But it doesn't hurt my feelings to be called a dreamer. <laughs> I remember Bishop growing up in the, the house with Bishop. Brother John said it right. Bishop's probably one of the hardest working men you'll ever meet. We used to have a church out in Sturgisville a long time ago. And there was a work and there was a work to try to get God to do great things in this whole tri-state out of a small town that had probably about 300 people. And there was people that said, that's just what's wrong with Pastor Smith. He just can't be satisfied with what he got. <laughs> He's never happy. I think there could be a lot worse things than wanting just to be mediocre. We live in a time, church, we live in a time. And I feel sorry a lot of times for these young people because we live in a time political correctness. We live in a time of participation trophies. <laughs> Everybody gets a participation trophy. Everybody, there's no winners, there's no losers, there's no A, B, C, D, or F. They're just satisfactory. Everybody wins. Everybody. And what happens is we lose that passion and we lose that hunger for more. We lose that hunger and that desire to be better. Bishop, you preached it this morning so beautifully. So many people are getting so satisfied with just being complacent, just having things the way they are when God's longing for us to go to another level. Church, in these next 10 years, I'm going to remind you of the dream every Sunday, every week. We're going to remember the dream. Every time you start to want to go back and roll over and go back to bed, I want you to remember the dream. That there's Brianna's out there and there's Anna's out there and there's Kaylee's out there that are just waiting for somebody to bring them. How many people would be in this church today if every one of us would do like an Angela would do and just grab a handful of kids and bring them to church? This little Kaylee here has been coming to church since she was 18 months old. She doesn't know anything but Grace Point because her granny wouldn't let her stay home. And we're raising up a church. We're raising up a church of dreamers. People that say, Pastor, I don't want to be the same. I don't want to just be mediocre. I want to believe. I want to believe that our best days are ahead. You know what? It gets sometimes, and I'll let you in on a little secret, it gets frustrating. When this church is not rich by no means, we, we literally make it week to week. That's why Pastor Smith, Bishop, and Pastor, 
We're always telling you, pay your tithe and offering because Vectoring doesn't take a rain check. Vectoring doesn't say, well, just pray for us and you guys don't have to pay your bill this month. We live week to week. And then we get a chance, we buy some extra equipment. Then the equipment doesn't work properly. And it seems like it's always one thing. We come in this morning, the drums are not working. But what keeps us driving and keep us going is the dream. I want to be somebody that when I walk down the street, they say, here comes the dreamer. Here comes the guy that believes that God can still move in Evansville. I don't want to be the same. I don't want to be, I love every church that's in this city, but I don't want to be like every church. I want to be the church that God has called us to be right here in this city. I want to be better. I want to do better. I want God to do great things in our life. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Praise singers, would you come? What's God giving you a dream of? What's God putting in your heart? What's God calling you to do in your personal life? Because the truth of the matter is you don't like who you are. Some of you are in this place right now. You're not satisfied. You're not happy. Because you know you're not, li you're not living up to your potential. And God is giving you dreams. And God is giving you visions. And it's not cold pizza that's keeping you up at night. It's not, it's not just awkwardness. It's just not that your pillow wasn't fluffed right. And that's why you keep waking up. God keeps waking you up to get your attention. That there's so much more that you can do. He's not satisfied with you just surviving. He's not satisfied with you just existing. He wants you to go to another level. Because there's people outside these doors that need. They need you. They need your dream. They need you to do exactly what God is telling you to do. Because there's so many more that will come. Hallelujah. Some of you this morning, this afternoon, I'm sorry, has a dream. You want God to do amazing things in your life. As we start to sing, would you come, would you come, would you come? Lord, I'm available to you. How many of you are available today for the Lord? My will I give to you. I'll do what you say to use me, Lord, to show someone the way. Yes, Lord. And enable me to say my story just my story How many wants the Lord just to fill you up today? And I'm available. And I am available to you, Lord. Can you lift your hands in this place? The song just as simply says, Lord, I'm available I'm to you. I'm available to you. Oh, my will, will I give to you. I give to this you. This next 10 years, Lord, I'll, I'll do, do what you what say to do. Say, do oh, just use, use me, Lord, Lord to, show, to someone. show someone the way and it enables, enables me to say my, my story is empty and I am and available, I am available. My storage is empty, God. And I am available. My storage, my storage is empty. And I'm available. And I am available. My storage is empty. And I am available to you. As we gather up here at this front, I want everybody my that's... God's Isn't touching your heart. God's talking to you today. Pastor, what does God want me to be? You know what God wants you to be? He wants you to be a big bucket that says, Lord, fill me up and then pour me out. Fill me up to the top, Lord, and then pour me out into somebody's lives. 
so they can be blessed and they can be used and they can be saved. No matter what you're going through, church, what's your dream? What's your vision? What's God? You don't have to be ordained as a pastor. You don't have to be a pastor's wife. You don't have to be a Sunday school teacher to be a minister. Each and every one of you right now have a calling in your life. Nobody in this church right now is exempt from the calling of God. Pastor, I'm not, I, 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 don't, I don't have college degrees. I don't, I don't have a, a master's. I don't have, you know what, let me tell you something here. God never calls the equipped. Right. He equips the called. Hallelujah. Yes, God. If you give yourself yes, to Jesus, God will use it. Right. If you say, Lord, this is all I have, he says, that's Hallelujah. exactly enough. Amen. And I'll take it, and I'll bless it, oh, and I'll break God. it, Hallelujah. and I'll use it. Yes, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Every one of you here today say, Lord, Lord I'm available. I'm available, God. Are you really? Amen. Are you really? Hallelujah. 2018, I'm available. Yes, say this with me, Father. In the name of Jesus. I may not have it all. I have imperfections. I have shortcomings. But Lord, what I have, I give it to you. I give it to you. All of it. All of it. So you can take it. So you can take it. You can break me. You can break me. And you can make me. And you can make me. To be the person, to be the person, and the vessel, and the vessel that's willing to be used. That is willing to be used. Father God, Father God, today, today, on this tenth anniversary, on this tenth anniversary, if you permit, if you permit, and if it's your will, and if it's your will, that we be here in ten more years, be here in ten more years, you'll find me, you'll find me serving, you serving you with a greater passion, with a greater passion, and a greater anointing, and a greater anointing, and a greater fervor. Than I've, ever had before. than I've ever had before. In the name, in the of, name Jesus. of Jesus. Use me this year. Use me this Use year. Use me this year, God. To help me. To help bring three souls bring to you. Bring three souls to you, God. Lord, I want three. Lord, I want three. I want three, Lord. I want three, Lord. In Jesus' in name. Jesus name. I'll fast for my three. I'll fast for my three. I'll pray for my three. I'll pray for my three. I'll turn away the table turn for my away three. The table for Lord, I'll seek your face I'll for my three. Face for my three. Until they're saved. Until they're saved. And they're living for you. They're living for in you. Jesus in Jesus' name. My storage is empty. And I am nothing lovable. My storage is Is there anybody that needs prayer at this time? Just raise your hand. And you pastor, lay hands on you. Come on. My storage is empty. And I am available. 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 My storage is empty. Lord, I am available. My storage is empty. And I am available. My storage is empty, Lord. And I am available. My storage is empty. And I am available. My storage is empty. And I am available. My storage is empty. And I am available to you. Clap your hands and give the Lord Hallelujah. praise. Come on, clap your hands to Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Oh, yes, God. I'm available. Hallelujah. I'm available. In Jesus' name, God bless each and every one of you. If God's touched your heart today, don't let it pass. 
Don't let it slip by. Tomorrow night here at Grace Point Church, we're going to have prayer. Amen. It'll be our final day of our three-week, 21 days of prayer and consecration. I don't want to go out with a whimper. I want to go out with a bang. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I'm praying that each and every one of you that would, when we first started prayer meeting, when we first started the 10, the, the 21 day, the very first prayer meeting we had, we had 35 people there. Amen. I don't want to have less than that on the last day. Amen. Every one of you that can come in, it's one hour. Jesus said, Can you not pray with me yes. just one hour? End this thing right. Come in tomorrow Amen. night, seven o'clock from seven to eight. I promise you, we'll get you right out. Amen. And we're going to continue. We're going to continue. If it's okay with everybody, if you if you're not reading your Bible with us and you say, Pastor, I'm not going to follow along. Just let me know, and I'll make a special group. But I'm going to continue. We're going to continue reading the Bible as a whole, as a church for the rest of the year. Amen. So I'll continue to send your scriptures and let you know when uh, each day your assignment for what we're pre uh, what we're praying and reading uh, the Bible about together. Amen. We want you to be a part of that. Also, don't forget, amen, we're going to have a wonderful, wonderful service Wednesday night. Everybody say Wednesday night. Wednesday night. Amen. Wednesday is, is the middle of the week. It's called hump day. It's right in the middle. Amen. As soon as I said that, everybody thought of that camel. Hump day is here. <laughs> uh, Wednesday. Everybody be here for service, midweek worship service Wednesday. Amen. We're going to have a wonderful, awesome time. If you like what you felt tonight, just wait until Wednesday. Thank Amen. You, Be back here. And then, of course, this next Sunday, we're going to have powerful services. Bishop will be preaching the gospel. Amen. We're going to have a wonderful time. Amen. Pray for Bishop as he leaves to go to the Bahamas this week. He's, he's going to be really suffering for Christ. Amen. He's asking if anybody wanted to take his place for him, if you want to go to the Bahamas in this place. Amen. Uh, just go see him after. Amen. Uh, but, but pray for Bishop. And also... Pray for us this next week as God just moves in Grace Point. This is what it's all about. This is a good turnout today. We love each and every one of you, the Cornwells. Thank you for staying this whole time. Hope you stay and eat with us. Uh, we don't mind spending time as a family, amen, especially when it's your 10-year anniversary. And uh, we're just so thankful. Each and every one of you, that if you can stay, we're going to have a wonderful dinner here. We have ham and green beans and all types of stuff. We don't have as much as we thought we were going to have because half the church that... Uh, committed to, to bringing in green beans and baked beans and all the, the food that we were going to have end up getting sick. So we were finding out this morning we don't have as big of a of a, of a menu as we originally thought, but we're still going to have good food. Amen. All right. So everybody, uh, I'm going to dismiss you here in a minute with prayer, and then we're going to follow over here. Uh, what we normally do is we line up, and uh, we have a group here that's going to serve you as you come through. And then just take a seat. Make sure that when you sit down, try to go back to the back seats, all right? If you're in the first of the line, try to make sure you give, because everybody that takes the front seats, uh, then uh, the people are trying to work around you to get in. So so everybody, if you would, sit with people, uh, fill up a table, then we'll go on to the next table. Amen. God bless you in Jesus' name. How many of you enjoyed the service today? Angela, it's good to see you. Amen. God bless you.